any size. So now that we've got the uh, door panel off, um, and we're now ready to start working on the interior. We've disconnected all the wires and uh, got the uh, handle taken off so as that we can uh, be able to work on the interior here. So there's a lot to be done here because the uh, window regulator sits right behind here and goes up this way. And so there's no way to do that without uh, getting rid of you know, first of all, the speaker assembly system, which is goes clear from down here all the way over to here. It has uh, several Phillips screws to take that off. And then uh, we've got to pull this. And we may be able to get away with just uh, holding this foam piece. So this foam piece has to come out too. We may be able to get, get uh, if we're lucky, we can just take this foam piece once these screws are out and this is out and hold fold it up and get at the regulator without having to pull all the wires uh, here and disconnecting all this. So we'll just have to see as we get in there. So let's start taking this apart. So there's basically four Phillips screws that's gotta come out in order to take the uh, speaker system out. The speaker wire is here. You can disconnect this at any point. Uh, I just went ahead and just disconnected it now. So there's this one, there's one here, there's one here, and one down here. So we'll come back to you after we get all these out and get the uh, speaker ready to remove. We'll show you if there's any tricks to getting the speaker system out after we get the screws out. All right, so now we've got the screws out. This just lifts right out and we can set that aside. Do be real careful not to damage your speaker because you really don't want to have to replace that. So try and keep your fingers and tools away from the speaker itself. And then of course we have to take this part off here in order to be able to fold this uh, vapor barrier shield up and out of the way. So I, I believe that there's a uh, 10 millimeter bolt that sits right here that we need to take out. With this vapor barrier, it's gonna be old and it's just glued in with a uh, kind of a real sticky glue. So when you're taking it out, just go real, real slow. You can see right here, if you go real slow, this stuff will kind of slowly stretch and pull out. Whereas if you go real hard and fast, you're going to end up uh, tearing something and it's mo most likely gonna be this vapor barrier. So you can just see how it just stretches. Just go slow and you'll get it. So now that we've gotten enough of the um, vapor barrier off to where we can make sure we have the right part, the next couple of things that need to be done is we need to take the window shade off of here. There's two screws on this for the window shade to take that out of there on this particular vehicle, which because it's older uh, and has been worked on before, some of the plastic is broken, as we mentioned earlier in our introduction. So you can see that it's supposed to be a screw over on this side over here that's been broken. So uh, we'll have to decide whether we're gonna put this back in or whether it's worth putting it back in or not. So as you pull that out, you'll notice that there's some factory slits on this in order to pull the wires and everything through. Don't go beyond that. You don't wanna continue to rip out your uh, vapor barrier but you do have some factory slits that do exist there. So now we've got to get the window out. So we've already pulled out this screw down here. We've got to take these three screws out next because we've got to take the trim piece off of the outside in order to get the glass out. All right, patience and strength gets you there. Part of the issue you gotta remember is you've got this channel here, which holds the weather stripping that the window runs up and down in. All right, so we can't take the window out quite yet because the window is still attached to the uh, mechanism. So we've gotta undo a Torx screw that's holding that together. So, 
We'll come back to the other side and show you how to get that torque screw out of there. So the first thing you need to do is make sure your window's all up. I recommend taping it to hold it up because you're going to take out a Torx uh, screw right through this hole right there. Now it's a T25 and it's very, very short. So just be careful, you don't want to lose it. Uh, if it falls down inside the lower frame here, you can always pick it up. But that's how we got to get that out of there in order to get the glass out. And then we'll take the glass out and then we'll be able to remove the regulator because there's a uh, 10 millimeter uh, bolt that's underneath here that holds up the uh, uh, top part of the regulator. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out of there. Now, that's the part that just came out. Notice it's got a uh, rubber uh, grommet here, and that's to protect the glass. So this goes through uh, against the glass, and there's one on the back side that you want to uh, capture as well. So now we're going to take the glass out, now that we've got that off. So you're going to need to work the glass out from around this uh, weather seal there, and just kind of work it up. You're going to need to get it to the outside. And you notice now I've got this edge out and I've got this edge out. So from there you just kind of, just like we did the other piece, just slowly work that out of there. And that comes out. And now you can see how the regulator works, moving the window up and down, because that's uh, where the regulator attaches to the window to pull the window up and down. So we've got a uh, 10 millimeter socket that uh, we have to take out to get the upper part of the regulator out of here. And it's way back in there. So you have to kind of fish around to see if you can make sure you get it. Uh, there it goes. Uh, boy, whoever did this one last time, Really, uh, really overdid it. After you loosen it up, there's a couple ways to get the bolt out of here. We have to use a grabber. Uh, you could use a little magnetic fish, or if you're lucky enough and a, an expensive enough toolbox, you might have a magnetic uh, socket. But you'll have to put fish that out of there in order to get that loose. So now we're gonna work on the bottom. Now the bottom, you can't really get a, you can't really get a socket on the bottom. Okay, there's just no way you can get in there with a socket. So I recommend a ratcheting uh, uh, box end wrench. And even though you see it slotted here, it makes it look like you can just slide that thing up and out of there, but it doesn't slide up and out of there. So you just have to take it out all the way. Got it. Come on, stay on there, sucker. Uh, no. Getting so it doesn't ratchet. There we go. All right, so now we got that one out. So there is a third bolt on these uh, regulators that needs to come out, and that's on this underneath this other grommet. 
we've already taken that grommet out. So, now we'll just see if we can get this bolt out of here. There we go. Now it's loose. Let's see if we can get this slide around. There goes the bolt. There's a little tab right here, a little latch. This is a window regulator here. You can see the wire that goes down around this uh, pulley here, and then there's this pulley up here which broke. And that's a very common mechanism for these things falling apart. When it goes back in the car, it goes back in the car this way and this is where the window with the uh, hole in it that we showed you earlier, and it makes it slide up and down. So that's the mechanism and the way the mechanism works. Very common for these little pulleys to fracture and break, unfortunately, but that's the uh, most common failure mechanism. So when we took this out, we, this is a 10 millimeter socket uh, down here at the bottom, and that's what we use to take the top screws out. It turns out that uh, while a 10 millimeter socket works, it's not the right tool. So these are actually external Torx uh, uh, bolts. And so the right tool to use is an external Torx socket. And that will give you a lot uh, snugger and tighter fit. So if you did happen to take them out with a uh, regular 10 millimeter, you might munge up the uh, edges uh, on this, but the right thing to do is go ahead and either get different bolts, which I don't recommend, or get yourself a set of external uh, Torx sockets. Additionally, if you look here on the car, you'll see that we have an external Torx socket right there, and that should have given me a hint that we might run into that and uh, use those. But with the bolts buried so deep in there, it was hard to see exactly what they were. We could just see it well enough to be able to get on there. So that's a little bit of uh, advice and a little bit of a mea culpa there on uh, taking this thing apart, putting it back together again. So when we put it back together again, we will use the correct socket. So in putting this back together again, it's easiest if you put this end that goes down at the bottom up in the door first and then you can start working your way with this part and going back and forth remember you've still got your cable you your electrical cable you've got to hook up there we go okay get it up there hear the click all right so now we've got the electrical hooked up now we can just start working our way up and around, to get that back in place. Okay, so once it's kind of in place now, we're gonna have to remove this lower bolt because again, we can't get that up high enough to make it slide in through the slot. Bolt in there. So <clears throat> lining up these top ones, you've got to make three points lined up, which is kind of difficult. So what we did was uh, 
we lined up the top and then we tightened the 10 millimeter down here to hold this structure in place so that we had we could mess around with trying to get everything lined up and put in place there. I did just for the sake of uh, ease, I used a uh, magnetic to get it fish it in there and get it started by a few threads. And I used a 10 millimeter, just hand tighten it in there to get it close. And then we went ahead and used the proper wrench, that E12 to uh, tighten it up. So it's something you just have to fish with a little bit. It's a little difficult because there's nothing holding it in place other than the bolts. So that, that's kind of what we did. I um, uh, hope that helps you. Uh, be as clever as you can, because you'll need it. At this point, we hooked up the uh, switch. We went ahead and hooked up the switch, turned on the ignition, so that so we can check to make sure the regulator's working. So you can see it's working. Now, when we put the glass back in, we're not gonna put it all the way to the top uh, like we did before. We're going to uh, go ahead and leave it down a little ways, and that way it's easier to hook up the glass down here rather than try and do it through the hole up here. We had to do it that way to take it apart, but uh, because the window wasn't working, but we don't have to do it that way here uh, at this point. So now we're gonna put the glass back in and uh, connect it up to the uh, uh, pulley. So we put the window back in. You gotta remember to get it lined back up into the slots and to be sure and get the uh, uh, weather stripping uh, set between the two pieces. Now, part of the reason that we left the um, uh, attachment nut a little bit up was so that we could still grab the window and manipulate it around. So, uh, you can see we're not quite, there we go. So now we got it into this side here and we're working it into that side there. And now we can go down and we just barely touch the uh, where it's got to latch in. So now we'll move to the other side and that way we can grab the top of this and help move it up and down a little bit to, uh, so we can bolt it in. All right, so now the window is sitting here on the lip. We're gonna bring it down, hold it in place. So we're gonna get the uh, bolt running here. Now this is a T30, if you remember. So now we've got the window basically in place. Now, the window can cock and twist because you've got a single attachment point here. And so uh, we wanna at this point be able to run the window to make sure that we've got clearance on everything before we start tightening everything down. Uh, remember we still got the exterior piece we've gotta put back on out here too. So we're gonna leave this all open until we make sure we've got all the alignments and adjustments taken care of so that the window goes up and down smoothly. So now we're gonna start running the window up and down a little bit and make sure that things are seated out properly. I don't just ram it up, just start moving it a little bit at a time. Make sure that everything is lining up. And then when it comes down, so we're fortunate we made a, we got a good alignment to begin with. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up this Torx and then we'll insert the uh, trim piece on the back side here. Remember you're dealing with glass, so you want this to be a snug, but you don't wanna over tighten it because you don't wanna damage the glass. So, it, so just kind of get it uh, just to where you have a kind of a good snug on it and you'll be good enough. All right, so now we'll put in that exterior trim piece. We'll go ahead and run this on down. It'll make it a little easier to put in that exterior trim piece with this all the way down. And I'll pick up from there. So when you put this one in, remember you've got to get the, a little bit of separation there. You've got the channel, you've got to start working that in. So go ahead and get into the channel and then start working it down, making sure that the weather stripping continues to go into that channel as you work it on down.
for those that are a little more ambitious about maintaining your uh, weather stripping, you can always use a little bit of uh, silicon uh, uh, spray or silicon uh, grease to kind of rejuvenate these weather seals a little bit. And then uh, bring this piece on down. Mm. All right, and now it sits in, then you've got to work it back up as long as it mates up. And now we've got the weather seal in nicely. So before we put the screws back in, we'll go ahead and run the uh, window up and down one more time to make sure that now that that's in place that things are good. All right, so we'll put those two screws back in to hold that um, trim piece in place. Uh, actually, the three screws. And then we're gonna have to call it quits for today because we've ordered out some parts to uh, uh, replace some of the things that uh, has fractured. Remember, the plastic's really old. So we've ordered out uh, new window shades screens for the uh, side uh, uh, window as well as the main window. And so we'll put everything back together again when those parts come in because they have to go in first. So we hope this has been helpful to this point. If you don't have shade screens on your car, you can go ahead and put things back together again in reverse order that you uh, saw. It. We hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, give us a thumbs up on the uh, uh, like button and subscribe to our channel. And look below for links to any of the tools or uh, items that were used that might be useful for you as well.